I've been a bit obsessive about component video for older game consoles lately, so I thought I'd go over how I get the most out of my video quality and hopefully answer any questions you have about getting the best video you can from components. This whole obsession of mine began when I found out about the HD Retrovision component cables for the Genesis and SNES. My best friend had a Super Nintendo and I had a Genesis, so naturally we both got cables for our respective systems. What's cool about the Genesis cables is that you can get adapters for them to play Sega Saturn, PS1, or even Neo Geo, but I've only got the Saturn adapters for now. Setting up component cables is pretty easy. If you're playing on a Genesis, you'll want to switch the brightness on the cables down, but if you're playing on the Saturn, keep the switch up. Hopefully you'll get great video quality from this, however, some televisions do not work with these component cables. The television I had when I first got this was one of the unlucky ones that did not support 240p video via component. So if you're having this issue with the HD Retrovision cables, all is not lost. The way I see it is you've got two options. You can either buy an upscaler or you can get another display. If you've got your heart set on using your fancy new flat screen, then you're going to need some sort of video upscaler. I highly discourage buying a generic component to HDMI scaler though. These don't process 240p correctly and you will either get no image at all or you'll get this weird half size resolution due to the 240p incorrectly being displayed. The first upscaler that I'll recommend is the RetroTINK 2X. At the recording of this video, the RetroTINK 2X goes for $90. This is the cheapest high quality upscaler you can get, at least as far as I know. What's cool is that it's also fitted with more than just component as it also offers S-Video and Composite. The RetroTINK works by acting as a line doubler, effectively doubling the 240p resolution to 480p and sending it out via HDMI. Since it's only doubling the lines, there isn't actually any complicated video processing going on, so it effectively is lag free. That means that any lag that you experience while playing is only going to be caused by your television, not the RetroTINK. Try turning off any fancy settings and switching to game mode if you are running into this issue. The RetroTINK outputs component video beautifully. If you compare it to a regular composite signal, you can really just see how good it looks. If you're using component cables on a system that offers 3D games, the RetroTINK also has a smoothing filter that I think looks particularly nice on these kinds of titles, making the jagged edges a bit softer. I don't like the filter for 2D games though, as I like my pixels to be sharp. The composite video works just as suspected, but I don't recommend getting the RetroTINK just for composite video unless you've got a really bad lag issue from using a generic composite upscaler. The S-Video on the RetroTINK looks great too, but definitely stick with component if you can. I think that the RetroTINK is great, but if you want to get the best video quality possible out of component, then I recommend the OSSC. The OSSC does essentially the same job as the RetroTINK, but it can also do a 3x, 4x, and 5x mode. Because of this and other features such as generating scan lines, the OSSC is a bit pricier. I got mine direct from Video Game Perfection for about $140. Directly comparing the 2x mode of the OSSC and the RetroTINK, you can just slightly see that the video quality is a bit better on the OSSC. Everything is just a touch sharper. However, the real upgrades come when you use the 3x, 4x, and 5x modes. These modes make the picture look even better, but be careful, not all televisions are guaranteed to work with these modes, and the same goes for capture cards. These modes output at bizarre resolutions, so many televisions and capture cards, like my Elgato HD60S, cannot capture the 3x, 4x, or 5x modes, so if you intend to do a lot of recording, keep this in mind. You should also know that although the 5x mode looks great, it does tend to cut off the top and bottom by several pixels, so if you've got crucial information at the top or bottom of your screen, you might just want to stick with the 4x mode. In addition to all these scaling options, the OSSC also has RGB SCART and VGA inputs, so it's got a nice variety of signals that it can accept, most notably for me, the VGA output for a Sega Dreamcast. The only real issue I have with the OSSC is that there isn't a direct RCA audio in. So instead, you have to get a stereo RCA female to male headphone jack in order to get the audio from component or VGA. The OSSC is for sure my preferred upscaler, but that doesn't mean that the RetroTINK shouldn't be considered. With a cheaper price point and composite and S-Video support, the RetroTINK is great if you've got older consoles or computers like the TI-99 or 4A that only support composite, or if you're a big fan of S-Video. 
Now, if you invest all of your time into this but still get input lag, then I recommend looking into using a computer monitor with one of the upscalers I just mentioned. A computer monitor is going to be able to handle games better than a television is, having as little lag as possible on a digital display. My Asus monitor is able to display every multiple that the OSSC throws at it except for the non-scaled pass-through. If I ever have to play on a newer display, I always play on this monitor to minimize as much lag as I can. However, if you really want to get rid of as much latency as possible, you might want to look into getting a CRT that supports component. When I brought up the OSSC, I mentioned it had a scanline generator. So CRTs are going to give you that scanline aesthetic that everyone seems to love so much. CRTs are also just what older consoles were designed to run on. But don't go hop on Craigslist and just buy the first CRT that you find. Not all CRTs are going to have the same input options. While component video is certainly an analog signal, in my experience, I haven't found as many CRTs with component inputs as I have flat screens with them. If you check Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, you can always find them and oftentimes for free. People usually take more than one picture, so you should be able to see if it has the right inputs you're looking for. From what I've heard, the Sony Trinitrons are a fan favorite, but there's a ton of different models, so make sure you do your research, and I recommend sticking with a standard definition CRT. But if you're looking for the ultimate video quality, then I welcome you to the world of PVMs. These babies were only ever sold to news broadcasting companies, hospitals, and other places like that. They are the highest quality CRTs, and they were meant to always be turned on, so they look incredible and are rugged beasts to boot. Now depending on where you look, you probably aren't going to find these for cheap, and it won't have the exact inputs you're looking for. PVMs use what's called BNC connectors. They work just like component, but have a different connector. As long as you get a PVM that can support component video, then all you need is a female RCA to male BNC connector to set up your consoles. I recommend getting the gold-plated ones since they tend to fit better than the regular ones. Once you've got that, you're ready to experience perhaps the greatest way to play retro games. I'll be making another video soon that goes more in depth on PVMs, mine in particular, as well as my whole setup for capturing footage, so if you want more info on that, I'll link to that video, you know, once it exists. Hopefully that helps, but feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'm Boffner, and I'll see you all next time! Whoa. Oh, come on.